Thank you, London. What's the weather like where you are? It's not so clever here. Oof, they've gone. That's a bit rude of them. And a bit short-sighted, too. Because uh, the listeners enjoy a bit of banter during the handover, don't you, listeners? Doesn't have to be saucy. Though, if it's of a mildly cheeky nature, then all well and good. Oh, Ken's here. Are you all right, Ken? No. Ken Worthington. Uh, stepping out of his neck things. It's uh, horrible out there. It is. I've not managed to walk the dog yet. Oh. And my wife, Mary, is in bed with flu. At one point, we uh, considered cancelling the show, didn't we, Ken? We did. But decided it might be a bit churlish to do that. Mm, I don't think it would have been, Ken. Ken's feeling very bitter, because his roadshow's been rained off. Mm -hmm. But give it time, Ken. It might brighten up. Oh, some hope. Right, time for a jingle on my music centre. Whether you're a typist or a concert pianist Or your dream is to be a dental hygienist Turn the telly down or ideally off And tune in to Radio Shuttleworth Oh, no! <coughs> that was you, Ken. Oh, wasn't it? No! Radio Shuttleworth What's on the show, do? What's on the show? Tell us at once, we're dying to know. Well, Ken, on this, the final edition of Radio Shuttleworth, weatherman John Cadley, who I reckon has got a bit of explaining to do. Sean Locke will be hoping to make Mary merry, and John Maloney to impress an impresario. And at last, I promise, the answer to Ken's brain teaser. Just some of the goodies on this week's edition of Radio Shuttleworth. Oof. Just finishing time there. Wouldn't have been able to do that a few weeks ago. Hey, Ken? Mm. What are you doing? Oh, he's playing notes and crosses on the steamed up window. Are you winning? Mm. Yeah, it's a great shame about the road show mm. because a lot of people had invested a lot of time and energy yes. uh, in preparing for it. Uh, Darren's friend Plunker, he made lots of Radio Shuttle with car stickers because he's got some special pens and these were to have been distributed by hostesses Mary Shuttleworth and Joan Chitter, dressed in rara skirts and T-shirts, bearing the station's logo. Mm. Um, Mary's illness has put paid to that. Yes. Joan couldn't do it anyway, because uh, she had to pick up her grandson, Jordan, from play school, oh. take him home, give him a bit of tea, you know. Yes. Ken was to have been roving MC, uh, dressed in a wacky costume, Interviewing local characters. Mm. Oh, it'd have been lovely. It would. You know, the whole community would have come together. Yeah. But Ken was frightened of being splashed by passing vehicles, weren't you, Ken? A little bit. But you could have made a joke after that. You know, oh, I'm getting wet through. Mm. Uh, back to you in the studio. Mm. You know, it's funny, that sort of thing. I know it is. Some might argue that you're a chicken, Ken. <sighs> Well, you do it, John. You go out and do the road show in the pouring rain. No, I've got more sense, Ken. Mm. I don't want to risk getting uh, an electric shock off a wet microphone. Oh, now he tells me. Oh, oh. our first guess has arrived. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, Ken, why don't you go and put all the correct entries for the brain teaser in a hat, mm -hmm. and we'll see you later for the grand draw. Yes, all right, John. <laughs> John Kettley. Is it? I can't see. It is, John. It's a bit rough, isn't it? Oh, it's a rain on my glasses. Is it John Cattley? It is. I am here, John. How do you do? How are you? Come in, John. Thanks very much, lad. It's door shut. <coughs> now, listen, John. First things first, get your wet things off. Uh, not, yeah. a, not everything. I was just... Uh, it's just me out of garments. Just your out of garments. At the moment. <laughs> oh. As soon as you've done that, John, do come through into the lounge. Yeah, in here, John. Uh, come and warm yourself by the fire. That feels a lot better. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, John. But sorry about the clothes horse um, in the way. Well, we've still got one at home. Yeah. yeah well, you can't do without a clothes horse. Well, you? I'm just trying to dry our clothes. Right. Because obviously I can't. We haven't got a tumble dryer. We're not that flash. No. But you have them, aren't you? Tumble dryer? No. Have no, you not? I don't, no. I don't go for. I'm not a materialistic type. I don't go for things like tumble dryers. But you must surely uh, need the basic uh, human requirements of warmth. And yes, food I, I and shelter. Like so do warm yourself by the fire. No, thank you. And at this stage, John, I must ask you, please, to speak in hushed tones and move about the house quietly, because my wife Mary is in bed. Oh. Uh, she's got flu. Really? Because of the uh, all Bad the luck. storms we've had recently. Mm, it's been rough. And I do blame you, John, 
Oh, you... no, I don't want to get blamed for well, that. It's not, it's not that. We're all in the messengers. It's ironic, though, isn't it? Well... That, you know, since we heard that you were coming on the show... It's been rough ever it, since. It I has. Know, I know what you mean. Yeah, and uh, we're going to ask you to read out the weather in a little while to see if the situation will improve. That'll be great. Yeah? Oh, thanks, John. Uh, in the meantime, would you like um, a hot drink? Would you like some uh, Horlicks Light or... I like, I like a whatever. cocoa. I like, I'm, I'm a bit partial to cocoa. Why? Are you going to bed? No, not yet, but it just keeps me going. Right. A bit of cocoa. I, I just find it's, it's very relaxing on the brain. Yeah. And especially when you've got cold and wet of a travelling. All right. It's nice. Well, I'll make a cocoa. cocoa. Thank you. Be great, uh, that, John. Uh, but, there's no, <laughs> but there's no nibbles, John. I've not had a chance to get out to the shops yet. Well, I find cocoa is very filling in itself. I don't think I need nibbles. I, I like nibbles with a drink of beer. Right. Well, uh, that's but it's a bit early for beer, really. Even for me. Yeah. Oh, can you excuse me for a minute, please, John? Yeah. Um, do you want to make your own cocoa? No, it's a bit rude, isn't it? No, no, I'll get... no, I'll get the hang of it. Yeah, you sure? Huh? Show me where the kettle well, is. I'll show you where the kettle is, John Kettley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ken Worthington speaking. Yeah, just through there, John. Oh, John, yeah. it's for you. Oh, right. Um, Ken, would you kindly come and keep John Kettley company in the kitchen? <laughs> Sounds like a tongue twister, didn't it? It did. Yes, yes, I will. No problem. Thanks, Ken. Mr Kettley? Hello? Hello, John. Yes, it's, who's that? It's Sean Locke here. What do you want, lad? Well, I'm phoning in about the uh, Make Merry Merry challenge. Oh, I see. Right. Make Merry Merry, make her laugh. Prove alternative comedy is funny, not naff. Oh, I'm a bit out of breath because I've just raced upstairs to pick up the bedroom extension. Um, Mary is now sitting up in bed, knitting, and looking a lot better. <laughs> and ready, I hope, to be made merry by an alternative comedian. Oh, Jan, not now. Oh, I'm poorly. I know, love. Can't we do it but, another day? Well, no. It's the last <laughs> programme in the series. Look, I know you said you wouldn't do this item again, Mary. I did. But laughter is the best medicine. Oh. Please, love. Oh, all right. Oh, thank you. But this is the last time, John. Yeah. I'm telling you. All right. Sean? Hello, John. Yeah, sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, you've got a difficult job ahead. No, I, I can do it. I, I, yeah. I can make that woman woman laugh. She she will be rolling around, clutching her sides. I guarantee it. <sighs> right, well, let's see if Sean's boast holds water. Hurry up. Um, John's receiver. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, you have a mere minute in which to make Mary merry, starting from now. Hello, Mary. Did you know that the tiger will be extinct in the year 2002? No. So don't go in the jungle for another four years. Not safe for them buggers roaming about. Hey, you just um, swallowed you. Did it? Oh, you know, do you oh. like cooking? Everybody mm. likes cooking, don't they? Yeah. Well, you know that Delia Smith? Mm. I reckon she's a witch. Mm. Because I followed her recipe for Christmas pudding and summoned up the devil. What's going on there, then? It's disgraceful, isn't it? And uh, what I like to do when I'm uh, when I'm uh, sort of pursuing my own interests is I like to make my own soil. Oh yes. What I do is I get sa sharp sand, mm -hmm. uh, vegetable pulp, and worms imported from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I put them in the airing cupboard. I leave them about two weeks. I've got a lovely big bag of mulchy soil. It's mm -hmm. really really nutritious, good, yeah. decent stuff. And also I make my own water. I got it wrong at first. I had two hydrogen, one oxygen, one damp enough. Same. <laughs> You've still got ten seconds to go, Sean. Sure. Have I? You have. Oh, crikey. Yes. I thought that stuff would... Yeah, I didn't... Because I need the laughs in between. You normally, thought there'd be laughter, didn't you? I thought there'd be laughter in between. But sort of there wasn't. Me, there wasn't. Through. Anyway, your minute's up now. <coughs> and, uh, thank you, thank you. Absolutely That rubbish. was, uh, Terrible. Um, oh, complete waste of time, that, John. Yeah. Right, I'm going to get back to my knitting now. All right, love. Sean Lock, you failed to make Mary merry. Yeah, I did, yeah. Nerves. Yeah, I think I think, I, I think I went a bit too cocky, don't you? Yes, you've got quite a nice um, lounge lizard type voice. He's mm. quite silky, seductive. Mm. Yeah. Have you not thought about um, being a DJ like me, for in a shopping mall, something like that? Because you can advertise all the latest bargains in between spinning discs. No, no, it's not really what I want to do. I no. kind of want to be uh, a, a, a fireman, a comedian. <sighs> well. You know, I'm not being nasty, but I think you are possibly wasting your time and everybody else's. Mm. <laughs> yes. You know, why don't you... Um... Get off. Well, I think we'd better leave it there, Sean. You've gone a bit silly. Thanks for taking part. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, dear. It's Radio Shadow Work with John, Mary and Kate.
What do you want? I'm John Maloney. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I know what you want. You want to impress an impresario. Come on in, John. Impress an impresario. A chance to join Ken Stable. Impress an impresario. A deal is on the table. Impress an impresario. And I'll make you a star, you know. Win Ken's applause. The world is yours. Incur his wrath. It's an early bath. Mm, it will be. Yeah. And as comedian, stroke accordionist John Maloney makes himself at home upon a bar stool in the kitchen, why don't we can uh, have the answer to the brain teaser mm. and do the grand draw? Yes, well, yeah. I'm not quite ready for you yet, John. Oh. Just give me a bit more time, please. Blimey, there must have been lots of entries. Mm. <laughs> All right, then let's see if John Maloney is ready for us. Yes. Do you want it now? Yes, we do, mm. John. Please. I got stung by a bee yesterday. Twenty quid for jar of honey. Bloke next door to me is an unemployed exorcist. He's just had his house repossessed. I went to a dyslexic rave. Loads of people taking F. to the supermarket, I bought some HP sauce, I've got to pay 6p a week over three months. Here's one, here's one. I'm not saying my wife's fat. She might be listening. Oh, whoa. John Maloney, mm. what's your verdict, Ken? Well, John, this is the act I've been waiting for, and it's come just in the nick of time. Really? With Christmas coming up, John is ideally equipped to do promotional work. <sighs> I'd like to put John on a busy high street, advertising tractor spares, mobile phones, what have you, Ooh. and adapting his material to include references to those products. Yes. And at the end, he could say, and we're at Unit B on the industrial estate... <sighs> Yeah. You know what I mean? And then people would follow him. Oh. Like the Pied Piper. Yes. Guiding them to the warehouse or wherever, you know. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, Ken, mm. and I'm not trying to tell you his job here. No. But shouldn't John be more comically attired? Perhaps in your roadshow outfit. Mm. Which, incidentally, listeners, Ken is still sporting. Well, it's funny you should say that. I was going to um, ask John if he wouldn't mind putting on me axe hat. Yeah. And then perhaps performing a little piece. Is, is that all right? Can we do that? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I like the way you're saying it. Yes, well, I like the way you're doing it. Oh, you see, that fits beautifully. It does. If you're mopping a floor, or stepping a door, or laying a piece of turf, Take a break for goodness sake with Radio Shadow Right, I'm back in the lounge with our special guest, John Kettley. How's the coat go? That was very nice. Even though I had to make it myself. Yeah. But never mind. Good oh. practice for me. It was. What, for when you become uh, a bachelor? A housewife. Because you are married, aren't you? I'm married, yeah, to a lovely lady called Lynn. Yeah. And we've got two grand little lads. Of course, it doesn't matter these days about them being born outside Yorkshire, either. They can still play for Yorkshire if they're any good at cricket. Yeah. They were both born in Cambridge. Yeah. There's still this assumption that uh, Yorkshiremen like cricket, but I hate it. Oh, I can't understand that. I, I mean, like ping pong. That's my game. Table game? tennis. It only goes on five days, a good game of cricket. Ping I, pong? You like ping pong? I had a little game with Patrick Moore um, after the programme the other week. He's got a very awkward smash. He really? sort of like brings his arm right into his body. It's oh, quite an it? oriental style. Oh, though yeah. it's not penals, this is a conventional hole. Right. But he, oof, you know, he, had, he, he beat me, you know. He beat you? Yeah. It's still light on his feet, then. It certainly is. Well, listen, John, we digress, because it's time for the news and weather. Really? Um, I haven't got a jingle for this, so I have to play Tommy Organ. Oh. Ooh. Oh, it's too dainty. Hang on. He's a funky clavy, number 68. Yeah. And now the new... Oh, just realised we can't have the news, because uh, the paper boy's not come yet. He's probably sheltering somewhere. So, let's move straight on to the weather. Uh, with John Kettley. Thank you, John. Well, the clearer skies are moving in from the west at the moment. We should see a big improvement in conditions as we go through the evening. 
A fine night coming up, a starry night too, with temperatures tumbling away to about 6 degrees, and then tomorrow looks a much better day, John. I think we'll see a lot of sunshine. It might cloud over again in the afternoon. The wind's freshening after dark, but no rain until late evening. Back Ooh. to you. Right, thank you, John. <clears throat> so, an end to the inclement conditions, then? Well, inclement's a fancy word, and I must say I never use that word. No. Yes, you do. No. You use it all the time. No, it's, it's too posh for me, John. What did you say, then? Well, rough. Rough. Really? Rough. It's, a, it's rough weather. Yeah. And it's rough today. Oh, we've uh, attracted the dog, John. Saying rough continually. She thinks it's time for a walk. Hello. And she badly needs one, actually. Really? So, I was just wondering if you wouldn't mind taking her. Because it's brightening up, according to the weather forecast. Yeah? Is that all right? Take a little well, look. I'll have a look round Sheffield. I haven't been to Sheffield for many a year. Yeah. So it'll be nice. Here's a lead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calm down, Kirsty. Oh, are you sure about this, John? Ta-da. Bye, John. Take care. God, blimey. Oh, where's this starry night, John promised us? If you're feeling down and your bubbles burst, tune in to Radio Shadow I think now might be a good time to perform a song which celebrates summer in the county. Scenes from South Yorkshire. See that chimney lean, eat your ice cream, where have those sandals been? I'll go for the green, are you watching closely, Ardeen? Catch that train, meet a soldier called Shane, get off that train. Get back on it again Avoid that rain Buy some flowers for Elaine Yes, so, um, are you looking for a Santa? For Santa's Grotto? We've not got a Santa's Grotto, love, I don't think. Oh, why not? That's uh, going to disappoint the little boys and girls, isn't it? Right, love, let me just ask manager just a minute. Thank you. Good afternoon, can I help you? Yes, uh, I'd be very interested in playing Santa for you. <laughs> Would you? Yes. <laughs> Tell me what sort, of things that you, what, what sort of things you do. We haven't got a grotto. No. Well, um... I'm quite experienced. I've, I was on I was on tally with the children in need. Right. Ninety one, dressed yeah. as a tanner, uh, yeah. the big floppy hat. Uh, he couldn't really see me. There was a group of firemen in front of us. They had a bigger check than us, you know. Right. But um, I know I've just done a, a fun swim yeah. to raise money to buy boxing gloves for right. underprivileged boys. Yeah. And 
I was just as a foot soldier, we were going to reenact a massacre in right. the deep end. Yeah. But uh, everybody bottled out, you know, they turned up in trunks. Oh, dear. So I was the only one in fancy dress. <laughs> so I felt a bit foolish, just <laughs> stood there with my pike, you know. Well, they didn't play ball, did they? They didn't, <laughs> no. But, uh, and, you know, I've got children of my own. My, my grandniece, Michaela, sits on my knee and sort of falls backwards and giggles, you know. Yeah. So my knees are quite comfortable to sit on. Yeah. They're not too bony, which can be a problem. Yeah. Uh, with, with older men, you know. Yeah. So what sort of thing could you do for us in this store with not having the grotto? <clears throat> well, I could uh, distribute sweets. Yes. I could um, sing little songs, you know, Jennifer Rush, foreign and that sort of thing. Right. Whatever you want to. Okay. What, what sort of charge? Um, well, I'd do it for nothing, really. Would you? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I could, actually. Okay. Yeah, no, no, John. It's there that you do the gag about the five-year anti-corrosion guarantee. Yeah, well, you know, I haven't necessarily been given the full context of what I'm doing. We are all learning. All right, keep your hair on. Ooh. Right, from the top again, please, John, if it's not too much trouble. Huh? Oh, John Kettley's back. <sighs> Come in, John. It's, uh... Even worse now, isn't it, Bony Gale? Your forecast was completely wrong. <laughs> but, you know, what do you expect from a no, weatherman? No, 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 it wasn't that bad, John. And you've been gone a long time. Well, I'm jiggered, I'll tell you, I'm jiggered, but <laughs> we did actually cheat and went jumping in the car and we drove off up into uh, Derbyshire. And that dog is exhausted. It, it is. Well, she... And so am I. Yeah, well, I'm, with respect, John, I'm not bothered about you. I'm bothered about my dog. <laughs> Oof, she's got to just sneeze, then. She's caught flu. <laughs> You've, uh, Come here, Kirsty, get you by the fire. Now, look, John, you know, you're a bit naughty to do that, if you don't mind me well, saying. I'm sorry, but I thought I was doing the best for the dog. I don't think it's been getting exercise. Well, no, because of the weather. It's only a little Scotty dog. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't take it up. Where'd you go? Kinder Scout? Somewhere like that? Well, I think it wasn't so far off there. Oh, John, I've got two invalids on my hands now. I'll probably have three in a minute, because you might have caught to chill as well. That is absolutely true, John. Yeah? Well, I'll go make another cold call. Thank you. It relaxes the brain, you know. <laughs> Not that his brain needs relaxing. Ken, you're all alone in the kitchen. Mm. What's happened to John Maloney? Oh, he was too headstrong, too fiery. Ooh. He couldn't take advice. No. So he had to go. I think what you really mean is, Ken, he didn't want to walk down the street advertising tractor spares. Mm. But I do. Really? <gasps> Oh, I can't. Just remembered uh, I've agreed to be Santa Ooh. in a department store. Hey, that pays very well, John. Nice one. Does it? Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Well, you've uh, certainly impressed an impresario with that piece of news. <laughs> Let's have a Malibu to celebrate. Well, not just yet, Ken. Uh, first, we must announce the winner of this blinking brain teaser, mm. which has become a bit of an albatross during the series. It has, yes. I almost wish we hadn't done the item. Do you? Mm. But anyway, hold out the hat. This is... Um, one of those big felt hats with uh, an axe on. Looks like it's going through his head. Mm. Uh, when they first appeared, they were very frightening. Mm. But now they're accepted as a novelty item. They are, yes. So I'm closing my eyes, and I'm fishing around for... Ooh, it's, it's empty, Ken. Mm. What's going on here? Where's all the correct entries? There aren't any, John. What do you mean? You didn't give out your home address on air. I certainly didn't, Ken. I don't want uh, you sitting on me wall, damaging the pointing. So I've just had it done. Mm. In fact, I did it myself. Mm. Yes, but that's why I'd... there's no entries, John. Nobody knew your address apart from me, and I don't know the answer. <gasps> oh, Ken, we've disturbed Mary. <gasps> Can you hear her clunking about? Oh, dear. <laughs> oh. Hello, love. Will we be being a bit noisy? No more than usual. <laughs> what you got there? Mary's just knitted a nice sweater mm. for somebody. Lovely. Mm. It's for John Kettley. Ooh. Where is he? Uh, he's in the lounge, love. Right, thank you. Ooh. Hello, I'm Mary. It's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Pleasure's all mine, Mary. Oh, well, she's better. <laughs> uh, are we expecting any more guests, Ken? Uh, no, John. Didn't think so. Joan Chitty. Hiya, John. Are we having this road show or what? Ken, it's snowing. Is it? <gasps> oh. children having snowball fights. Wow. Uh, Neighbours chatting animatedly. <laughs> oh. A real carnival atmosphere. There is. And, to give the proceedings a Dickensian feel, mm -hmm. John Maloney is sat on a pillar box playing the accordion. Oh, yes. Do you want to go and join them, Ken? I, I will. Yeah. Yes. And get your roadshow underway. Mm -hmm. 
Though, unfortunately, it'll be too late to go on air. It doesn't matter. Oh, hello, John. Hello, Ken. Oh. Hello, Ken. Uh, there's no need to take the mickey. Sorry. John, just no. because Ken's got slightly a squeaky voice, you know. Can't tell. I can't. John Kettle is showing off. This has got a brand new pulley and mittens to match, which uh, is put into immediate good use, making a snowball, which is... No. Oh, it's coming my way. Oh, Luckily, the axe on Ken's fun hat got in the way, slashing the snowball in two. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. You're not going out as well, are you, love? No. You're still in your nighty. Shut up, Jen. It's lovely. It is. Mm. Uh, don't say goodbye to the listeners, Mary, because we're about to close down. Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Well, it's not too early to say that, because we're in December now. And what a fitting way to end the series with a lovely snow shower. Mm. Shame John Kettley wasn't able to predict it. But then, as he said, he is only the messenger after all. Blue. But since it started snowing, I feel much better, thank you. Oh, see it fall. This Christmas is going to be a white one after all. Here we go, we're dancing in the drifting snow. John Kettley, you were wrong. Merry Christmas, I can go to bargaining with you So don't be glum Eat a bowl of ready bread And put your mittens on mm, Yes, here we go We're dancing in the drifting snow John Candy, you We're on Merry Christmas everyone the weather forecast said no snow. It did. And a dull night. Mm. But there's nothing dull about Ken's road show. No. Now in full flight. It is. Come and join us, Jack. Yes, I will show the Ken. Oh, got you, Jack. Oh, Jack. Here we go. We're dancing in the drifting snow. John can't be you. Christmas everyone. Merry Christmas everyone. And thanks for listening. Bye. Careful, Ken. Yeah. Did you got me, huh? yeah. Radio Shuttleworth was written and performed by Graham Fellows, with additional material by Martin Willis. The programme was produced by Graham Fellows and Dawn Ellis. The series producer was Paul Slesinger. 